Praise God! We have an altar. Welcome to Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. You know, the book of Hebrews is an amazing book, and there's this powerful theological truth found within a passage in Hebrews chapter 13. The range of this passage is Hebrews chapter 13, verses 7 through 14, and I thought it'd be fantastic to share it with you. We have an altar. The writer of Hebrews is saying this, remember your leaders who have spoken God's word to you as you carefully observe the outcome of their lives, imitate their faith. What a great example that is. If we can find somebody living an authentic Christian faith, why not just imitate their faith? And then verse 8 is one of the greatest verses in the whole Bible. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then he gets practical again in verse 9. Don't be led astray by various kinds of strange teachings. And then he goes into a little bit more detail when he says, For it is good for the heart to be established by grace and not by food regulations, since those who observe them have not benefited. And then he makes this grand statement for which he will then explain in verse 10, we have an altar from which those who worship at the tabernacle do not have a right to eat. And then he describes why in verse 11, for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the most holy place by the high priest is as a sin offering are burned outside the camp. Verse 12, then it says, therefore, and you know, in the New Testament epistles, when it says, therefore, there's a reason it's there for. And this is what he says after talking about the old way of sacrificing outside the camp. And then he mentions this once for all sacrifice in verse 12. Therefore, Jesus also suffered outside the gate so that he might sanctify the people by his own blood. Oh, hallelujah. The work of Christ was salvation. It was cleansing and it was sanctifying. The righteousness of God placed upon the believer within one simple act of faith as a person puts their trust in Christ. Oh, yes, Jesus also suffered outside the gate so that he might sanctify the people by his own blood, the once for all sacrifice. And it's here that he makes this grand appeal at the close of this passage in verse 13. Remember what it said in verse 8? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And now in verse 13, it says, let us then. What a concluding thought. What a great transitional um, logic, right? From the therefore in verse 12 to the let us then in verse 13. Let us then go to him outside the camp because that's where the work was done. Bearing his disgrace, right? When the believer gets baptized, and declares to the world that he belongs to Jesus, buried with him in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life, we identify with Christ on every level. His death, burial, and resurrection, and because he's been resurrected, we are guaranteed a resurrection. And this is why he says that, let us go to him outside the camp, bearing his disgrace. Why? The final verse, 14. For we do not have an enduring city here. Instead, we seek one that is to come. We have an altar. Thanks for watching. Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. If you like these videos, hit that red button called subscribe. It doesn't cost a thing, and you only have to do it once. And I'm also happy to let you know that my handle my new YouTube handle is at
Bobble on the go. Praise God.